I felt that the training that it could offer me would be very valuable for lots of reasons, not just for um, skills at work, but skills in my personal life. I was very interested in finding out what my weaknesses were and as well as that finding out where my strengths were and um, possibly working on my weaknesses to make myself a more well-rounded person. I signed up for PDP because uh, doing engineering you don't really get any other skills. Um, there are no presentation skills, there are no um, interview skills um, that you're taught within the first, well, any year of university. A friend of mine had been on PDP and she'd, I saw the changes that happened in her during the time she was on the course. She grew in confidence and had become much more outgoing and took up on initiatives. And I looked at her and how she had been before that and thought, oh, I think I'll go on that course too. The Academic Enterprise and Training Unit aims to challenge the traditional approach to education and to move towards a much more student-centred approach to learning, which involves active learning, learning from experience and the development of personal transferable skills as a vehicle for that. One of the ways we do this is the personal development program and that is to do with introducing personal transferable skills to a core of students who are then able to go into departments and facilitate change within departments through a cascading approach. PDP is an experiential development program with the intention of improving students' capability in a range of practical skills which they will find useful both in their academic coursework and in anything that they do subsequent to university. How long have we got, Kate? Uh, right. There have been many studies done on what employers want from graduates and these are all the personal transferable skills. They want, first of all, communication skills. Uh, people who can work in teams and have experience of working in teams and working cooperatively together. Graduates who are motivated to achieve. People who have shown flexibility and adaptability. And finally, but by no means least, people who can manage themselves and indeed have a certain amount of self-confidence. Okay, I want Lee and Christoph. Yeah and guide the plank over the water. They chose me as leader because I'd already led an activity which had gone reasonably well and they were quite confident with me as a leader. You don't actually move your body but if you just try and lift, move your hand down to the right and try and lift it slightly. It really made me get an organised plan in my head very quickly. I couldn't panic but I had to be quick thinking and on the ball and with ready solutions all the time and be calm as well so that they believed in me and that they were confident in what they were doing. <laughs> being part of a team and being part of a group and working towards a common goal is far more important than the end result. It's the way that you do it that's important. Our approach to learning development is essentially about putting the student in the position of being the manager of their own learning. So we're not setting out to challenge traditional teaching in the form of lectures, but rather to say that if you're going to run an activity with students, that they should be involved as partners rather than as passive recipients. Within PDP, uh, there are a series of tasks that students are asked to carry out in teams. Teamwork is important because we're trying to encourage students to operate cooperatively, which they'll be required to do ultimately in the workplace, and because to approach a task, it's much more effective and efficient 
to work as a team. Yeah, as long as it drops on the floor straight, it doesn't matter. Oh, yeah. Can we get this any tighter? Can you pull this rope What are you doing there, Tim? Yeah. We'd start to panic, and then we'd sit down and say, no, look, we've got to plan it. What are we doing? Yeah. We usually listen to each other quite well, I think, even if everyone was talking all at once. If somebody had something important to say, they could say it, and everybody else would listen and take notice of them. The leadership of the group rotates to allow the group to see how leadership styles vary between individuals. So we've got two minutes left. It was interesting to see how people did gel together. I mean, our group of people I've never ordinarily met or spoken to, and yet thrown together, and we wanted to do well, and there was great enthusiasm. And. It's quite amazing how you can suddenly get into it, you panic and you think, God, I've got to lead this group and I've got to give them a plan, and you can do it. It gives you a lot of confidence. I think we did work quite well in my particular group anyway. At the beginning, perhaps, when we didn't know each other that well, it was a bit more difficult, but as we got to know each other more, then we found that we could really rely on each other more and we worked better as a team. We almost succeeded in completing the task, but not quite. <laughs> At the end of each command task, there is a review. That's a peer review, which means that every individual in the team has a responsibility for contributing their views as to how the leader led and the team worked. We were rushed for time, so yeah. I think so we did have enough time to undo it again and do it again. Yeah, <laughs> you, go. you actually tend to start rushing yeah. um, a good 10 to 15 minutes before the end of the time. We did have to do something. Yeah, that's it. We all discussed what was good and what was bad, and in general, there were lots of good points came out. We'd worked together well, and the fact that we didn't quite complete it didn't really matter too much. Team, how did your leader motivate you? Yeah, yeah. How? I think it's really good. Yeah, by listening. It's important to the learning that the exercises are observed and the discussion, in other words, the the reflective learning, is facilitated. So we use a student who has done PDP the preceding year to act as a group facilitator, ensuring that everyone contributes to the discussions to the best of their ability. She'd always help us to see what the good points were and she'd discuss with us what we could do better next time, which was really helpful, so we could actually know how to improve all our skills. You're also really good at saying, shut up and listen. The benefit to the group is that they get an objective viewpoint and the benefit to the facilitator is that their personal development is advanced by looking at the whole process from a very different perspective. I was president of the Linguistic Society this year. It was a role in which I had to listen and ask people to do tasks for me and um, get feedback from them. And I think that I approached the, ta the task as of president probably a lot more tactfully than I would have if I hadn't had a group over the outdoor weekend. I think I learned an awful lot from it. Say, for the sake of argument, at this point that he held it on trust, okay, then it would the be... The development of student facilitators on PDP was so effective that we decided to apply it to coursework. He's trusty and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're getting confused with um, putting it in the bank account. SI, Supplemental Instruction, is an active learning peer group. Second and third year students are trained to guide first year students through some of the really difficult concepts that first year students have to meet on certain what are known to be difficult courses. And in laws, this was introduced into property one. Yeah, somehow barely you just put in something without really thinking of getting something back. And I want. If I gave you my lamp to hold for her so she could live in it, and that's, that's a trust. Active learning allows students to become fully involved in their own learning. And active learning that is student-centered means that students can take significantly more responsibility for their own learning. 
they are actively involved and they are no longer the passive recipients of knowledge. The purpose of the law department is to foster an appreciation and understanding of law in its intellectual, social and philosophical context. No, money doesn't need money. Some of our students will be solicitors, some will be barristers, some will be working in the legal context in business. But others will be doing a wide range of things from accountancy to social work and most things in between. But we do not think through what do employers want, therefore we will provide this. It's more subtle than that. The fact is that to learn about the law, one needs to be imaginative, one has to apply your learning to new and novel situations. That, by its very nature, will prepare them for the outside world, we think very well. But it's not something we do not decide what does the employer need, we shall therefore go and try and provide it. But good teaching and good learning practice requires us to go down routes that will indeed benefit those students who go into employment in, in the near future. SI is a perfect example of something which facilitates their learning and their understanding and will prepare them for the future. It's something that gives them confidence and makes the students realise they have a resource within themselves. It cuts the umbilical cord. She's not one to complain, but she feels that the cost of living and the fact that she's been with the company for 14 years um, requires a raise. The way that the unit aims to relate what we do to the world beyond UCL is partly through deliberate career preparation, things like personal marketing, helping students understand what is required of them in, in the workplace, helping them to understand what skills they're going to need, and then providing the training to ensure that they are able to demonstrate those skills. Um, I suggest that we uh, would give them a raise of £3,000, which would um, just 1200 above inflation and 400 above what we got last year. That was one of my favourite sessions. Yeah. By some quirk of fate, I had seen Wall Street the night before. And I just had, you know, visions of hard-nosed negotiating and, and um, all this and all that going on in my head before I arrived. But the Touche Ross weekend showed me basically that um, the key to negotiating is getting to the point quickly, getting to the central issues, and getting those main sticky issues out of the way. Now, this is the sort of hard-working, energetic guy who, who, you know, finds problems, gets down to them, does the work. I suggest this is the sort of guy that we have to encourage, especially in a recession. That was, for me, not the most beneficial day that I went on. Partly because I'm very focused on to wanting to do speech therapy, and it was being run by accountants. However, I did learn from what went on there. I learned that my negotiation skills are not that good <laughs> for a start, and it's something that I've been working on since through the clinic placements that I've been on. But, I mean, how long is the predecessor there, then? You don't know, do you? Well, we shouldn't be looking at it. The predecessor could have been there for 30 years. We shouldn't be looking at the time period. We should be looking at job she's doing and how well she's doing it. But surely that depends on the surface of the world. The object of the exercise was to, to negotiate with our partners and to, to concede, but to try and concede as little as possible. A thousand, a thousand, Jeff? Yeah, all right. I felt very pleased because the character I was given was very objectionable and I managed to make him sound important enough so that people were prepared to give him money. Well, I mean, I'm telling you, the bare minimum to equal is 2750 but you can't put that yeah, down. We've yeah, got at least 3000 right. PDP acts as a very important bridge because we work with employers. It is an introduction for students to understand what the, what the real world or the world of work is about. If you're the, um, the, the IT manager, shall we say, so you took on responsibility for installing all of the hardware. If anybody in the room said, well, what about the contracts for the supplier? You say, none of your business, that's my business. I'm responsible for that. <coughs> I will sort that out. The project so management weekend, which is run by IBM, forms the culminating point of PDP. Not only do they learn project management skills, but they use them in a setting whereby they can draw on every other skill that they have learned so far. And in fact, success 
in the exercise depends on them being able to use those skills effectively. It's good to actually go into somewhere else, away from college, and gain an insight into what they were doing. We went through different sections of the project. We went through an overview of the project. And we actually, in our sessions, went right down to the lowest level, just doing a small portion of a project. So we got to see all the different stages within a project and how they relate to each other. A's finishing point is the starting point for the design yeah. task, yeah? yeah. Right. So they can start... Yeah. The thing is, yeah, it's, right. it's A's, A's longer than B and C in the first yeah. week, yeah? So B and C are obviously going to finish before A. We definitely improved the way we worked at the IBM weekend because at the beginning I remember having arguments and getting bogged down with details. Whereas towards the end we were saying, look, okay, we can't agree on this detail, but we know in general we want this particular thing to happen. Exactly, but I mean, also you can go on to do this, which we can finish that off later when these two are doing this one. No, it's just saying. Yeah, 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 that's right, he's right. Because they're waiting for him. The idea was to address concerns that other people had as managers of their own teams. I basically didn't sort of think, right, I'm the project manager, how would a project manager deal with it? I pretty much just dealt with it the way I would normally deal with the situation. I thought it went quite well, and when at some points when it seemed to be that um, sort of control was wavering, then I felt that I was quite able to refocus it. I found it very tough, and at the end of the weekend, I think, I had an immense sense of satisfaction that we'd, we'd really achieved something. One of the tasks especially was very easy for the uh, science students and I found it very difficult to grasp at the beginning but um, we, we worked together and we solved the problems. The unit is here to throw up ideas and to challenge the traditional way that staff do things so that they can come to us, they can ask advice, they can take ideas, they can adapt things to suit their purposes. One of my roles in the unit is working with academic departments when they have a need to improve some aspect of their coursework. And several times I've been involved with departments whereby they are already doing something but they want to make it more student-centered. A recent example of the unit's involvement was with the School of Library Archive and Information Studies and that involved providing teamwork leadership and project management skills training as a precursor to the central file project. Remember when teamwork's going well, it's transparent, you won't, you won't even be aware of it. But when people start arguing at 9.30 in the morning about who's going to do what and why, and when this argument is still going on at 11 o'clock, it may be useful to sort of refer back to some of the things I can say and say, ah, we're in the storming mode, perhaps we ought to, <laughs> or whatever. But the main thing is the project. The Central I File Project concerned. was jointly run by myself and by the archivist for the University of London. And it was designed so, to help the well, university well, archivist to sort the non-current well, records of the university administration seemed to me a wonderful opportunity of concentrating the efforts of a large group of people to gather information which we could then present. In I wanted the students to have an opportunity to use the professional skills which they've been developing during the year of the postgraduate course and to have a chance to try them out in a real environment on real records but an environment that was supportive and where if they made a complete mess of it it really didn't matter because I was there to help them to sort that out. The original numbering system was kept, but the new location and box number were added to existing lists. The project was tremendously successful. It was even more successful than past projects had been. And yet this was the first time that the project had been student managed as opposed to directed by the academic staff. So for the very first time, and I was very nervous about this, we handed over the project management to the student group and said, these are the skills you need, this is the project, you go and get on with it. Thank <laughs> you.
many students when they leave university no longer need to apply the knowledge that they have gained in their particular course. But what they do need are the personal transferable skills. And it is often on the personal transferable skills that they have and can show evidence of that they are recruited. Quite the way that things are natural. <laughs> We firmly believe that tomorrow's employers will want graduates who have an imaginative response to problems, who can learn quickly in new mediums, and an ability to transfer things they have learnt in one context to another context. And so we try and instill in students an imaginative approach to their learnings and their studies. I will be going to Paraguay on an expedition. Um, we go from mid-July and we'll be staying out there until mid-September. Oh, I see. What was that? So you mean we've got a football night time there? Yeah. There's four of us all together from UCL. Um, we're going to be spending two months in Paraguay this summer. We've organised it ourselves. The idea was our own. And we've raised more than half of the cost of the trip. It's going to be part of three of our students' dissertations. We've also managed to get some airtime on Radio 4 um, for an hour, which will be really good. And seeing as I'm going into the media, I want to get into the media, it would be very good for me on my CV, I think. PDP gives you sort of skills that you can use. It doesn't say this is what's going to happen. It's up to you whether you use them or not. PDP has certainly boosted my confidence in myself and my skills and made me see the abilities that I have. I've been running the Classical Society, Departmental Social sort of side, and if I'd known all of this before I'd taken this on, it would have helped me in terms of organising either time or speakers or whatever it might have been. Hey, try and get some rhythm. Roll, roll, roll. I know I'm more organised in Outlook, and it's made me aware of the, the value of other people's opinions as well and by all means put forward your ideas but um, other people can have a better idea and sometimes it's better to to admit defeat gracefully. I did attempt to do the, an expedition to Venezuela last year and it failed for several reasons. We, we um, lost our translator halfway through, um, we didn't get enough funding it wasn't organised enough, and I, I do feel that having done PDP has helped a lot.